What is the history of morality and what are its effects on our ways of life? I am Rodrigo Guim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. On the Genealogy of Morals is an 1887 book by the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Today I will continue the series of videos with the second video about the first essay of the book. Nietzsche begins the book's first essay by showing that studies of morality were not historical during his time. Studies by philosophers and psychologists were based on the premise that there is a universal truth about morality that could be unveiled. Nothing more unhistorical than an appeal to the universal. The good, for these philosophers and psychologists, was all that was done to another and that was useful to that other. It was an altruistic, unegoistic action. Nietzsche will then say that these thinkers were wrong about the origin of valuing something as good. Because for those thinkers, uh, whoever conceived something as good was the one who receives an act, is passive in the act. But valuing is an action. It requires the act of valuing. It cannot be that what is considered good is an inaction, because valuing is always an act. Otherwise, everything that is good would be good in itself without action, without valuation and would never change. However, what's considered good can change over time, and it does change, with changes in a person's life, society, culture. The origin of values would be, for Nietzsche, in history itself, and not in a historical a priori. Values, because they are historical, change as the correlations of forces also change. In metaphysical thought, which is still dominant today, things have an, an unchanging essence that travels through time, a teleology that comes to an end that is already given in the cause or in the origin. History would then be unilinear and everything that has an essence carries this essence, this identity, all the time. Rather than having values as given by an essence, Nietzsche asks about the value of values, the correlations of forces that make values, not given as essences, but that essences themselves are nothing more than correlations of forces. Valuations only, evaluations are only moments of passage. Unlike moralist thinkers then, who have morals as universal, Nietzsche starts from a thought about the history of morality. He wonders about the origins of evaluations. He wonders how can values, ways of evaluating, become dominant over other values. The good, which is contrary to the bad, because here we are not talking about morals as good and evil yet, the good, the evaluation good was, according to Nietzsche, not coming from the usefulness of something, not from the altruistic feeling, but from the self-valuation. The evaluation done by some people to themselves as having high value. For Nietzsche, the evaluation of something as good does not originate in, in the recipient or in the utility of an action, but in those who put themselves and assert their evaluation, who claim to be good as the highest value, who do not evaluate themselves in response to the evaluation that others do to themselves. In this way, Nietzsche shows that there is no universal valuation, that there are groups that place their values on themselves and only as a consequence of this act of self-valuation. They come only later as a result of this self-valuation to value others, other ways of life, other ways of valuing. The good mode of valuation was born for Nietzsche of this self-esteem of those who 
command themselves, who have no valuation starting in another. This is by no means good in itself. Nietzsche is not seeking to judge evaluation but to historicize. It is only when in history the mode of valuation based on this distance between self-worth and others changes that the meaning of good changes altogether. This change occurs when the mode of valuing what is good comes from the early priests, the early churches, who come to say that good is one who fights against evil. If before that the good contrasted with the bad and the bad was what was ignored or undervalued, now by the way of valuing of the churches, they first think of the evil to fight then only after one starts to look at what is left as good, as a reactive act. The priestly caste is one that will impress on society another mode of valuation, very opposite to the previous one, where the good was opposed to the bad. Now the opposition is between good and evil. A new morality is born, one that starts from hate towards an enemy. It is the hatred of the enemy, the evil, that will define the valuation that the new moral subjects will make of others, of themselves, and of life itself. What was before considered good, under this new valuation, by way of a spiritual vengeance, will now be called evil. Evaluation will become slave morality because the spiritual slave is the one who values first from the negation of the values of another, of the strongest, of everything that stands alone, that imposes itself, and only from this negation of the other that it constructs as an act. of the strongest, of everything that stands on itself, that imposes itself, and only from this negation of this other is that it constructs an action. An action that is reactive, that is not unique because they are always reacting to the other considered strong. It is a vindictive way of valuing, which values itself and other things from a reaction as its strongest mode of action. This reactive way of life belongs to the resentful. Says Nietzsche, citation, The slave revolt in morality begins when resentment itself becomes creative and gives birth to values. The resentment of natures who are denied the true reaction, that of deeds, and who compensate themselves with an imaginary revenge. While every noble morality develops from a triumphant affirmation of itself, slave morality from the outset says no to what is outside, what is different, what is not itself. And this no is its creative deed. This inversion of the value-positing eye, this need to direct one's view outward instead of back to oneself, is of the essence of resentment. In order to exist, slave morality always first needs a hostile external world. It needs, physiologically speaking, external stimuli in order to act at all. Its action is fundamentally reaction. End of quote. Evil, and from that it elaborates as a later idea the good, the good as itself. In this sense, slave morality is reactive. This made, according to Nietzsche, people become tired of man. For being man has become dominantly this vindictive, self-weary, domesticated being who does not seek its self-worth and self-assertion, who lives to degrade everything that arises, everything that is considered strong, intelligent, different, Everything that asserts itself is considered evil. This has created a fatality that is this weariness based on a general distrust of everything and everyone that carries force. But what kind of force? The force of life, because slave morality has generated 
a fear of being man, a general distrust and disregard for being man, a nihilism that is contrary to the forces that seek to assert themselves in life. Because for Nietzsche, the idea was created that there is a neutral subject who chooses to be strong or weak, chooses his actions. But this is a falsification of what is strength or weakness. For Nietzsche, there is no being behind doing. Being is a fiction because there is only being in action, becoming in constant movement and action. To exist is to act, because what is strong stands with its strength and has no other way of acting. And the weaknesses inherent in slave morality cannot thus assert themselves as force. There is no subject who decides to be strong or weak, a neutral subject. There are only forces that live through subjects, says Nietzsche, citation. To demand of strength that it should not express itself as strength, that it should not be a desire to overcome, a desire to throw down, a desire to become master, a thirst for enemies and resistances and triumphs, is just as absurd as to demand of weakness that it should express itself as strength. A quantum of force is equivalent to a quantum of drive, will, effect. More, it is nothing other than precisely this very driving, willing, effecting. And only owing to the seduction of language and of the fundamental errors of reason that are petrified in it, which conceives and mis misconceives all effects as conditioned by something that causes effects by a subject, can it appear otherwise. For just as the popular mind separates lightning from its flesh and takes the latter for an action, for the operation of a subject called lightning, so popular morality also separates strength from expressions of strength, as if there were a neutral substratum behind the strong man, which was free to express strength or not to do so. But there is no such substratum. There is no being behind doing, effecting, becoming. The doer is merely a fiction added to the deed. The deed is everything. End of quote. With this statement, Nietzsche declares that free will is one of the great fallacies that leads to great errors and mistakes. Action is everything. The subject of action is a fiction with great effects. Based on this fiction of the subject as the origin of actions, values were also created, but at the same time the creation of the value of values was hidden. By imputing to the subject the origin of actions, what was done was creating the conditions for a universalization of values and an internalization of these values in man. And this man, this inseparable creation of slave morality, becomes tired of itself, for now he must all the time find evil in himself and others as his starting point and goal of life, carrying out self-policing and war towards imaginary enemies as if this was its path of liberation. Well, people, now I need you to comment on Facebook or YouTube so I can enter into a conversation with you. This is an immersion in Nietzsche and Foucault. It's a conversation via videos where the questions brought by you I bring to the debate and I also bring new questions. Uh, we will continue this series with the next video where I will talk about the second essay of the book on the genealogy of morals. See you next time.